very happy to welcome my friend, music attorney, Ben McLean. Ben, great to see you. Thank you for having me, Bruce. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I guess, you know, the, the first question I want to ask is, you know, as a music attorney today, you have so much change. We've been talking so much about the changes that have gone on in the music business. Can you talk about what you feel are the most important things from a legal standpoint that a band or an artist starting out their career should be aware of foundationally? I, I don't think it's changed that much just because of the new okay. technology. It's still the basic things. Like if you have a band, there's four or five people in it. So it's a partnership situation. Sometimes everybody's equal and sometimes they're not. So I certainly encourage any band to have some kind of internal band agreement or band partnership agreement. They okay. don't necessarily have to form a corporation or an LLC because that's an additional expense, but some people do that. But just some something in writing just so it's kind of clear, like who owns the name? How do you split the profits? Are the expenses split equally? What happens if somebody leaves the band, which is common mm -hmm. with newer bands? And, and issues like that, the money, you know, if. if if, is everybody going to share the songwriting equally, the copyrights equally? Because in some situations, not everybody writes in a band, or else they write on different levels. And there's a lot of misunderstandings I've noticed between artistic people about really what a copyright is and what their share of things are. And I know some famous bands I've heard, like U2 and R.E.M., will just split everything equally, regardless of who did what. Van Halen did which, that, too. Van Halen, too, yes. which I think, if you look at the longevity of those groups, from a group harmony level that's probably smart because yes. everybody feels like they're vested and and they pro I mean if you're professional I would assume you're gonna work as hard as you can and not just be lazy but I've had a lot of situations where you kind of have a band leader who kind of feels like they carry more of the weight so they'd always want to split everything equally but if that's gonna be the case it needs to somehow be solidified in writing so there's no misunderstandings and then things like filing for the trademark just to protect the name because that's the brand Pre and post internet, the brand, the name was very valuable and still is. So people should take care of that and make sure they have that protected. And search. <laughs> with the internet now, it's a lot easier to do a search than it ever used to be to find out if you have some conflicting band name out there. Mm. Um, because that's another common problem with bands just think there's a cool name. They don't really care if anybody else has it. They just want to take it. And then they find out later, well, I've got to change it. I go through that probably more than anything, believe it or not. Really? Band yeah, names? Band, okay. band names, serious problem. You, you would think, you know, there's all these cool, unique ways of phrases, names, even foreign, foreign names, but for some reason people just grab the obvious sometimes, you know. Right. Um, and then, you know, copywriting your material, all, the, all these things are important regardless of the new technologies and the new media. So those are the, the basic things. Um, but th and then a lot of the things that aren't necessarily legal related, but we get involved with is just encouraging people, obviously, to, to use all the new technologies to get more exposure for themselves. So hopefully they'll be in a position to have an opportunity to profit from their names. And, and th there's a reason why they did all these legal things in the first place. So they have a long career and when issues come up, they're already protected. Um, so because all beforehand, like uh, when we both got in the business, it was really pre-internet, and it was just a lot of like uh, going down and you know, handshaking, passing out flyers, whatever. Now you do all that over the internet, but to a global audience, it's pretty cool. Right, but at the at the same time, I would think because everybody can do it, the challenge is getting people's attention. That's the mm -hmm. the, the challenge because so many people are, are doing that on the internet. We're all like overwhelmed. We are. <laughs> uh, with, with that today, you know, where people are, you know, sending songs and sending, you know, count. I mean, every morning when you get into your office, you must have, you know, hundreds of emails from legitimate emails from people like, you know, listen to my music. Will you represent? It's, you know, it must get overwhelming. Yeah, I'm not even an A&R person, so I can't even imagine what it's like for them. Although sometimes we feel like we are because a lot of, and you've been an A&R person, you look to agents, managers, lawyers to sort of filter things out. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes I'm, I am an A&R person in a, in a strange way, but a lot of times it's, it's just the way the artist presents themselves, whether it's on the internet or in person, it's just, you know, having a great subject line or having that great elevator pitch where, you know, in a couple, in 10 seconds, you can get out there. It's something that's going to hook somebody into wanting to really investigate the music and the image and whether it's something to check out. But so there's an art to that, I think, and you know some artists are smarter than others, obviously, and some work harder than others. But um, I think less is more 
really, okay. for anybody. You know, just hey, I got one song. Check it out. Here's a photo. Here's a little. You know, here's a link. If you if you like it, there's more information here as opposed to having to write a book, which some people do. Right. <laughs> Too verbose, and most people are like don't have time right now. I'll get to it later, and then they never do because everybody is busy. Right. Do you get more and more material submitted to you over the internet versus actual packages to yeah, your office? Yeah, I get very few. I've been noticing that very few CD physical CDs mm -hmm. these days. It's it's mostly just links or MP3s or some kind of streaming site. Okay. Which I prefer the streaming sites. If if you know, actually, I prefer a CD because I'm in the car a lot and I like to just if you're stuck in traffic, whatever. It's nice to be able to slip in a CD in and out couple seconds see if it's good to investigate but um i hate downloading and attached files and things it takes space it takes time so there's all these really you know these soundcloud type sites now are really good for just one click and a song plays it's, right. it's very simple let me ask you something you know you've worked with a lot of artists at a lot of different stages of their careers and i'm curious what what is at what point do you feel an artist needs to get legal representation or needs to have an attorney? Is it at the beginning when they're doing the foundational elements that you're talking about? Is it later when representation is going to come in the form of a, of a, a recording offer or a contract from somebody? What, what point do they need an attorney to be involved in their business affairs? Well, because it's such an indie type business now and you may never get a recording agreement. Right. Um, I, I obviously encourage most acts to Act as if you're never going to get one, because it's, if you want to, if you're going to be serious about your career and it's a business, you 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 form the, a real business and you act like it's a business. So if you're going to be a serious artist, I think early on you should do the basics: the partnership agreement, the co the trademark, the copyrights, whatever other side things might be necessary. Uh, and obviously, if somebody does offer you some kind of exclusive long-term piece of paper, yes, you should have a lawyer take a look at that. Whether you're new or old or whatever, it, uh, it's just never, I, I certainly encourage people never to be signing anything legal without some kind of experience counsel right. before. And it's definitely worth it. Because <laughs> you important. can just buy an hour of an attorney's time, have them take a look and at least give an opinion on it if you don't have much money. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars necessarily. I think that's a misconception about people think lawyers are just too expensive. And, and I'm not saying they're cheap, right. obviously, because, uh, you know, they gone to school forever and they've put in they've paid their dues so they can make money but you don't necessarily always have to buy a lot of attorney time just to kind of get an idea of whether this is bad or good you know okay so never signing before you have your agreement checked out by I think so history. okay yeah because yeah. I can't tell you how many like messes I have to clean up because people after the fact find out they signed bad paperwork and of course want to get out of the deal which Really, it's always easy. Did they sign an agreement without any kind of advice? A lot of times, yeah. A lot really? Of times. Still today, you'd, you'd think. I mean, there's, especially with the internet, you can find a lawyer right. or, or, or music business consultant or whatever, which uh, I don't encourage that so much. I really think you should have an experienced entertainment lawyer, not just a lawyer. You know right. what I mean? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> because yeah. we don't do bankruptcy or divorce we don't do it because I, I have no experience that's not your, in that that's not but your level of music yeah that's that is what we're an expert at so but I think because of the internet people probably has access to more you know legal contacts than they probably ever did before it doesn't have to be LA it could be New York Nashville it could be in Europe but there's a lot of lawyers out there too.